11 years ago, I remember it being a very warm, sunny, windy day here in Ohio. I think it almost reached 80 degrees that day. I was only in seventh grade at the time, but I was still really interested in weather back then, so I knew that there was supposed to be some bad weather happening in the south. I remember around dinner time, I saw that there was a tornado emergency for the city of Tuscaloosa. And that was the first time that I could remember hearing that terminology being used. Our five o'clock news starts now, and the news is weather. You are looking at a live, large, violent tornado wrapped in rain approaching downtown Tuscaloosa. This is a tornado emergency for the cities of Tuscaloosa and Northport and the campus of the University of, uh, West, or University of Alabama. Shortly after that tornado emergency, as most of you know, and as some of you have experienced firsthand, a violent EF4 tornado tore through the heart of Tuscaloosa, barely missing the University of Alabama, killing 53 and injuring over a thousand. The National Weather Service defines a tornado emergency as an exceedingly rare tornado warning issued when there is a severe threat to human life and catastrophic damage from an imminent or ongoing tornado. This tornado warning is reserved for situations when a reliable source confirms a tornado or there is clear radar evidence of the existence of a damaging tornado, such as the observation of debris. And even today, there are still a lot of people that don't really get the difference between a tornado watch warning and emergency. I've seen some meteorologists use the baking a cake analogy with the ingredients to represent the watch and then you put them together and you get the warning. And I get that, that's pretty clever, but I, I think it's still pretty confusing for some people. So today I'm gonna try to explain the difference between the three using basketball. Stick with me. All tornadoes come from thunderstorms and only some of those thunderstorms produce dangerous tornadoes. So a tornado watch over a specific area means that conditions in that area are favorable for the thunderstorms to produce a tornado. All the atmospheric conditions are in place for a tornado, but a tornado still might not happen. Let's equate a tornado occurring to LeBron James scoring 30 points in a game on the 2016 Cleveland Cavaliers. Let's say there is a home game tonight. It's Cavs versus Knicks at home in Cleveland. LeBron for the past six games has dropped 30 points and the Knicks are not a good team this year. All the right ingredients and conditions are in place for LeBron to potentially drop 30 points on the Knicks tonight so you could say there is a 30 point watch issued for tonight. Now, a tornado warning is issued when a tornado is expected or even confirmed. If it's expected, meteorologists are looking at the radar imagery, seeing rotation combined with their knowledge of the atmospheric conditions. They can say with a degree of confidence that there's most likely a tornado or one is likely to form. And if you're in the warning polygon, you should expect one and take shelter. And of course, tornado warnings can also cover confirmed tornadoes where spotters on the ground relay a confirmation of a visible tornado back to the forecasting office. Now, back to basketball. Say that LeBron James has already scored 25 points and it's only halftime. Or maybe he just made a three that puts him over the 30 point mark. Then the 30 point watch would be upgraded to a 30 point warning. It's statistically very likely that he will hit 30 points or it's been confirmed that he already hit 30 points. Unfortunately, this analogy completely falls apart when you try to consider a tornado emergency because LeBron James scoring 30 points is not exactly a life-threatening situation. But with all this being said, let's take a look at some past tornado emergencies and see what happened immediately after they were issued. After all, the first one ever was issued on May 3rd, 1999 by the Norman, Oklahoma office for the Bridge Creek Moore Tornado. Forecaster David Andrus said that he wanted to convey the imminent life-threatening danger of a violent tornado hitting a metro area. A tornado emergency was also issued for the Greensburg, Kansas tornado in 2007, which ended up killing 11 people. There was no official criteria for issuing a tornado emergency at the time, nor any sort of standardized wording. And on February 5th, 2008, this lack of standardization came to a head. This was the Super Tuesday tornado outbreak. 87 confirmed tornadoes killed 57 people in Dixie Alley and the lower Ohio Valley. Five tornado emergencies were issued that day, four in Tennessee and one in Alabama. However, an EF4 tornado was on the ground in Arkansas for 122 miles, killing 13 people 
but there was no tornado emergency issued. The Little Rock office at the time felt that tornado emergencies should be reserved for tornadoes moving into densely populated areas. They claimed that this was the general perception of weather forecasting offices at the time. Clinton and Mountain View, Arkansas were both pretty much in the path of that EF4 tornado, and they both had a population of about 2,500 people at the time. However, Greensburg, Kansas in 2007 had a population of around 1,500. And of course, we know that a tornado emergency was issued there. Needless to say, not long after the Super Tuesday outbreak, the tornado emergency was formally defined. Since 2010, there have been at least a couple tornado emergencies issued every year. 2015 was the least active year, only having two. And of course, the most active year by far was 2011. Not including Joplin, by the way. According to Springfield, Missouri National Weather Service forecaster Eric Wise, in that particular instance, the formation of the supercell and eventual tornado happened so fast that by the time the classic signatures of a violent tornado were evident, the tornado was already pretty much halfway through Joplin. It's really unfortunate that the seventh deadliest tornado in US history didn't have that tornado emergency tag. What if the National Weather Service issues a tornado emergency but there's no actual tornado, like at all. Is that even possible? Well, it actually kinda happened a couple weeks ago on April 11th. Let's take a look. So on April 11th, a confirmed large tornado was east of Mayflower, Arkansas, along Highway 89, prompting the National Weather Service to issue a tornado emergency. Reports of tornado damage along with a clear velocity signature contributed to the warning upgrade. However, the very next week we found out that a woman from none other than Cleveland, Ohio, sent five false reports through the spotter network, which the National Weather Service will reference to gather information before issuing a warning. As of April 2022, you're allowed to enter your own coordinates, which allows for the loophole of faking where you are and where your report is. Fast forward four days to April 15th, where we have another dangerous supercell thunderstorm near the town of Jonesboro, Arkansas, where the radar beam from Memphis is actually about 6,500 feet off the ground. The Weather Service issued a tornado emergency for this supercell to the north of Jonesboro. However, after a damage survey done in the following days, they were unable to confirm that a tornado had even touched down. The damage reports received were actually from straight line winds and three to four inch hail. These reports included instances of cars being flipped along Highway 67. There were also reports of funnel clouds and tornadoes touching down with the storm. However, when you look at the footage of said funnel cloud, it's actually just a tube cloud that isn't really associated with the tornado. It's understandable that somebody might mistake that for a tornado and then report it to the National Weather Service because it does look pretty ominous. And from the perspective of the National Weather Service, when you take all of these reports together and the radar imagery that you have, it really does kind of look like there's a tornado on the ground. At the time of recording us, there is another investigation to see if malicious reports were sent in with this Jonesboro storm. John Wetter, who is the president of the Spotter Network, doesn't really believe there was any foul play this time. There are some people who watch my video who have worked with or for the National Weather Service and the Storm Spotter Network. If you have any insider information on what exactly happened with these storms, definitely let us know in the comments. I'll pin your comment. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to like and subscribe, and I will see you next Wednesday.